Welcome back to another episode of DDO 10 Minute Tips. Um, in this series of ep episodes, videos, I'm going to focus on hirelings. Now, if you're new to DDO, you will probably want to get a hireling until you get the hang of how things work and play. Uh, when you go from Jeets up the path to the grotto, you should get enough to be able to hire a hireling. Uh, that's a little redundant, but uh, you should have enough platinum to do that. Now, the hirelings in Corthos are pretty cheap. They run about five gold pieces, so it really doesn't take all that much to be able to get one. Now, when you get a hireling, uh, some things you should be aware of. Um, there are two types of hirelings. There's a standard hireling that you get from hireling vendors. And then there's the gold seal hirelings that you can get through the DDO store. Um, the standard hirelings can only be summoned at the near where you came into a, a quest you get too far away you won't be able to summon them. Gold seal hirelings can be summoned anywhere along the way. With standard hirelings um, there are some hirelings that you cannot obtain uh, like rogues. If you want to hire a rogue, you'll have to go into the DDO store and use uh, DDO points, dungeon points. Uh, you'll hear it called several different things. Um, now, as far as the actions go, each one will act and react a little bit differently. So, to compare two first level barbarians, each one's going to have its own um, characteristics. Uh, same would go for clerics, fighters, sorcerers, uh, bards, uh, favored souls, and the others. Now, when you use the hirelings, there are basically three different modes that you can put them into. Well, I guess maybe four. Uh, they can be in a protective mode where they stay close to you and uh, will fight back once you take some damage. Uh, or at least get hit. Whether you take damage or not, that's a different thing. Uh, there's a proactive mode where you basically set them free and let them work things out. Uh, take actions they see fit at any particular time. And then there's a passive mode where they will basically just follow you around and do nothing. So through this uh, series of videos we're actually going to uh, go through those and ways that you can use them to get the most out of them. So I'm going to get one. I'm going to get the sorcerer here. 
and then I'll see you inside Hayden's crypt. Okay, so here we are inside uh, the Hayden family crypt. I have summoned uh, the spellcaster, Elizabeth Cinder, and you'll notice that they have their own um, hotbar, and each hireling will have four actions specific to them. And the rest, the other six here, are basically commands for them to do certain things. Alright, so with the gears here, you can have them like operate levers and things like that. This here is the passive mode, which I said before, uh, they'll just basically follow you around and do nothing. Uh, this is. Uh, the, would be for the protective mode where they will protect you once you uh, get hit. This is a proactive mode where you basically let the game itself control the NPC, the non-player character. One thing about hirelings is they can get stuck for various reasons. Um, they may try to take a shortcut for some strange odd reason and come upon an area where they can't progress forward or sideways to be able to get out, so they just get stuck there. So. This button here will have your hireling stay in place in the um, preferences, the settings. Um, you can disable this flag, which allows you to visually acquire them if you can't see them. It helps do that. If they're too far away, like you've told them to stay put, you went through a couple of sections and you need them, or if they get stuck, you can click the boots here, which will bring them to where you are. Okay, so that's pretty much the basics of working with hirelings. <laughs> in the next video um, we'll go into a little more detail about each of those some of those different things. So until next time my friends keep your weapons clean and sharp.